this video details the construction of a flex based controller system. Now the flex based controller system is highly, highly customizable. So this is going to be representative of a typical install. Now let's start with some of the basics of ingredients that we can start with. First is the SPI board. We're going to put in one SPI board on the base and then we're going to stack on it a long range differential board. And in this particular case we are going to install the Alpha Pix Evolution controller, but you also could install the Hinx Pix Pro, a more advanced controller. Now, we also are going to be installing two power supplies. This SPI board can be driven from two different banks, split into two, and so we want to put out a total of 60 amps across both banks. And we'll still have our long range board here, and we're going to mount this inside the HC2500 enclosure and that's what this looks like and we have here you can see clamps for outputs and in this particular case this would normally be for 32 output with a long range and then two uh, plugs for cat5 bulkheads now Again, this can be highly configurable. You might have two SPIs in a long range. You might have different CPU. You might have two or one power supplies. You might have four power supplies. It could be anything you choose. And it could be in a different enclosure like the 1500 enclosure as opposed to the 2500. All right, we have a few things here also. In addition to the mounting board, in this case it's 565. This is an internal use product, so it doesn't have all the regular markings. And we have our power supplies. These power supplies are Holiday Coro power supplies, and they have the standard Meanwell mounting platform. So if you have Meanwell power supplies, those will work fine. We have a power cord here for our country. And we have pre-cut cable. Now you will need to cut your own cable. Uh, each kit is unique. We use computerized cutting systems with large quantities of different types of cable, all cut perfectly. You may have to do some adjustments, we'll explain that in a moment. We get in the kit different kinds of screws for the power supplies and the controllers. We also get a package of hardware that comes with the expansion boards, nuts with a controller CPU. And we have this little trick here where we use this label, uh, and I'll show you that. Now we have some pretty basic tools here. Uh, pretty much we have uh, some pair of dikes or nippers. Uh, this is just a Phillips screwdriver and a nut driver. This is 5.5 millimeters. And so let's get started. Now you can do things the way you choose, but we would typically mount our power supplies first. So this expansion uh, mounting board has ability to mount one power supply straight across or two power supplies at the top or you may have an updated version in the future if you have a different kind of power supply such as a Meanwhile, to mount multiple power supplies. Now, in the middle here is a mounting bracket, and that actually secures two power supplies, which you're going to do. So, we're just going to take some nippers here, and we're going to cut those out, and that will give us our securing platform. Now, these slots down here are for the power supply, and we'll see how those help with ventilation. This also allows us to access a few other things. We have a power connection, um, power input, and some zip ties and other things here. So, Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna have all of our power coming in on the right hand side. Power input, the power connections, and you'll see that the, the FlexBase system is very well designed so that the cable runs are very short compared to other competitors. So let's start with that. So what we're gonna be doing is turning these on our sides. Now we could put one flat, but we're going to be turning them sideways. So I'm gonna take that and flip that over. And we're going to see that the holes mount up. So we're going to have four holes here. So we just move this around until we get our four holes here. And there they are. And I'm just going to take my screw here and screw that in. And that gets me started. And then what I'm going to do is go over here, locate my other holes on the other side, screw this in. Now, Holiday Coro uses internally special torque control screwdriver systems that manage the torque, so we don't overscrew your screws, but we also don't make them so that they're not tight enough that they don't attach and stay in place during shipping. All right, so we got our first power supply mounted. You can see that there's access to the voltage selection 
uh, power supply connection and you can see it's here it's all good all right so we're going to do our second one here now and we're going to take and mount this one and again we just move it around till we find our power supply it'll mine line right up there and put our screw in there and then line up our second one here Uh, this is an aluminum housing and on most power supplies, so uh, be sure not to over tighten these. Uh, they don't need to be very, very tight. Just get them snugged down. Uh, with four screws in there, they won't go anywhere. Also be aware that if you are using screws um, and you're using them mounting to the bottom, some power supplies unlike holiday coro where we have no per circuit board underneath these holes um, or on the sides you could have those in your power supply so be aware of the length of the screws in your particular power supply all right so now we've got them mounted you can see they're not completely secure so what you're going to do here is just take our uh, mounting bracket here and we only need uh, on two of these here just going to put a screw in there and Another screw here. And now you can see they're nice and tight. And we have our two power supplies. Now I've already pre-loosened these screws uh, so they're easier to hook up. And uh, since we're already familiar with this, what we're gonna do is we're going to take our uh, ground wires. Now we have these pre-cut already. We have a ground, a hot, and a neutral. And we're going to simply just tie these in here. You want to tighten these down, not too tight, let's not go crazy, but also not so loose that they should pull out with any kind of effort. All right, and what we're doing here is instead of running one or uh, two power cables to put a power in, since we have two power supplies, we're just jumping from one to the next. And so what I've done here is I've just put in these power cables here, and I'm going to run those up to the ground here and the neutral. Neutral is white in the US. And hot is black. And I'm just jumping those across, you can see. And we also need to hook a power cable, which of course has the same color wiring. And we're just gonna cut loose our power supply cable here. And it's going to come in through the bottom of this board and then come out on the top up there. Now, what we want to first do is run that cable through our enclosure. So on our enclosure, in this particular case, now if you have a separate kind of enclosure, you may have a different arrangement. We have a power gland, and we're just simply going to loosen this up and push this cable through there. Because if you don't put it through to begin with, you'll have some problems later. All right, so we've run the cable through. We can see that here. and. We're now going to hook it up to the power supply. So we're gonna to put together both of these wires. So I'm gonna start with the hot, slide my hot along with my jumpered hot power wire or the line wire. Screw those down and take my neutral, screw that down. Now the power supplies are all, all marked. You can see in for neutral and uh, the ground symbol, which is typically green and the hot with the line that is also marked on top of the power supply with the colors of black white and green used here in the u.s now if you have another country it may be different okay now i have already made a mistake here i'm just going to back up just real quick here and i did not run that through the hole all right so we have a little hole here because we're going to run this cable below this and i'm just going to put this back in here so, my assembly people would tell me I am not on my game. Here we go. And we slide those in there. You can see that this doesn't take long to do. All right, so now we have our cable running through here. And we're going to assemble the rest outside the controller. And we have this going through the controller housing. We've got an extra length of cable in here. Now, in our case, we already know that we have uh, the cable links already set up. 
and uh, so we have those already configured. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and run them. Now we have these pre-cut. What you can do is just cut an extra length of cable, mount everything, and then once you get it into place, then uh, cut the links to fit. Now, of course, these are going to, with some hope here, work out perfectly on the length. And I'm putting in positive for V plus, and negative is the minus. And we're gonna hook this up to the second one. And again, this is because we're running two power supplies and this might be if we were running, for example, 100 pixels uh, on a single 16 output. Maybe making a mega tree that's 16 strings by 100 pixels at 12 volts. All right, so now we have our wires, and we can see these come down here. Like that. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get our power board in here. Now, normally what I would suggest is that you remove all of your plugs first um, and get them out. Now, if you are going to build multiple tiers of an SPI control, like a 32, and you have them stacked, you build one layer, hook all your cables up, then build the next layer on top of it. Now, I am not going to show hooking up all the individual wires. That is a little bit lengthier process. Please note that we do clearly mark each one of them the outputs. They are broken down into outputs one through eight on the left and uh, nine through 16 on the right. And they are also marked up here, ground, ground, and nine through 16 and one through eight. So here's a little trick we have. Now we need to mount this onto the board and we need to put a spacer in between because we have little pins that, that, that are here. And so we need to space a little bit off of this mounting board. Now this mounting board is non-conductive, which is what you should have. Now we need to use some of the hardware that came in the kit. And so, here's what we've got here. So, um, now I don't see that we have our spacers. Unfortunately, I forgot my spacers and we'll have to skip those, but this is what you would have normally. So what we would have is we'd have our screws. So we have four screws in here that we're going to need for this setup. Now you may notice that there are six screws total here and uh, you only need those six uh, highest screws on those levels above. Now uh, we actually are going to mount all six though. So we're going to put the screws through and I'm just pushing them through. Now what I'm going to do here is actually I need to put them through it one section at a time. So I've put them through, you can see them there. And we use a little trick, we use some tape our holiday Coro tape here. And we, we really just take these like this and put it like that. And that holds them in. Watch, flip it over, now you're good to go. Now, unfortunately, I did not bring my spacers. What you should do is put uh, appropriate spacers included with your kit here. And you would put them on top. And the next thing you would do, go ahead, put your next ones in here. And now you mount your washers again, put the entire thing on top here, get all your screws to come through. So now we got six screws. Now we simply take the spacers. Now you'll notice that there's a long one and there is a short one. And the long one is what we're going to use here because we have, uh, we need a pretty big gap between these sections here. So we're just gonna take the long ones which are 40 millimeters. And we hook the females into the screws protruding from the bottom of the board through the PCB. Oh, I'm sorry. One more over here. Okay, so now we've got those screwed in there. And in this particular case, if we were building a second level, we would put in this third spacer riser. And that provides cantilever support so this doesn't uh, go down. Now, in this particular case, we are not putting in a second board on top because we have our long range. And you can see that it doesn't cantilever stick out. So in this particular case, we're gonna use the nuts that are included oops, with our kit here. And we're going to put those on there. And I'm going to use my nut driver here. 
screw those down. And let me get my other nut here. And we'll put this one over here. And we screw that down too. Okay, finish screwing all these others down. Now if you need to, if you have a hard time getting uh, any kind of um, uh, connection on this or holding this down, you can use uh, grippers or uh, little pliers or your nippers. You can use them to turn these uh, because they are brass and they're fairly strong. Now, you don't need to crank it down really, really tight here, just sufficiently enough to get it in there. Now, what we now need to do is uh, we're gonna put on our next level, and so we need to put this uh, connection in here also. So in this particular case, we are going to be putting in two boards. So the first board's going to be this, and then this, and then the second one's going to be this. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some scissors, and we're gonna cut off the excess. So if you look here, you'll see that we have three connections on one end and they're kind of together and then and one separated. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just cut this off. There you go. Uh, make sure it's a nice clean connection and none of the wires are touching. And we're going to put it, push it in here. Now this is keyed. It has a little notch over here. And so in that notch is going to be where the red wire goes. You can't hook it in backwards. It's keyed. And now we're going to go ahead and hook up our power input wiring. And we're going to also hook up some extra wiring because we need to jumper power for the long range differential board. And they're just going to jumper it off of this. So we're going to take our uh, negative here, screw that in there, and our other negative, screw that in there, and our positive. And finally, our other positive. So this means that each bank of one through eight will be getting a full 30 amps. And you can see now that we got all our cables here. They're nice and clean here. Now, I need to go back and add one more cable. So what I'm gonna do, unscrew this. I forgot to do this. And I'm gonna add in these two extra wires. I'm gonna add in here. Now this is the beauty of these kinds of connectors, these screw terminal connectors. You can add in two wires. And I'm going to add one more here. Okay, so what we have here, it doesn't matter which one of these, as long as you just get positive and negative. And this is because we are running this off of one um, set of power supplies, and we're going to need to get our power up here to our long range board. So now we got a long range board right here. So we need to unscrew these connections. They're marked with positive and negative on the board and we're just going to unscrew them. All right, and we're going to mount this board. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the shorter 30 millimeters, and I'm doing this so that I can just keep it in place so it doesn't move around as I'm assembling it. All right, let's put our 30 millimeter spacers since we don't need a lot of space above this long range board here. All right. Okay, so we're gonna slip our uh, positive and negatives under here. And there we go. And there we go. So, nice clean connection. And this long range board is not gonna use much power at all. All right, the next thing we need to do, get our next connection here. So, what we're gonna do is take this, and we're gonna trim off the extra cable here. Okay. There we go. Oops. All right, so uh, now what we need to do is go ahead and plug this in. We can see it plugged in now. So now we have both of these connectors ready to go. And uh, it's important to note that uh, boards start off with their numbering at the top. 
So there are 48 total ports possible. So port one, the closest to the back, and this uh, will then be one through 16, 32, um, and then 17 through 32, 33 through 48. All right, so we've got everything wired up. Now at this point, you would normally, of course, have connected or would be connecting your connections for your SPI boards. Now, we're gonna go ahead and mount our CPU. And let's just go ahead and review here. So you'll note that we have here, this is the first board, and that's the one closest, that's the uh, long range. We're gonna plug that into port one, and you can see that it says expansion here in there, one through 16. And then we're gonna mark the other one, 17 through 32. And if you need to, you can push these up under here uh, to take up the space if you don't like the wire up up there above. All right, now next, we have our nuts that go on top, and these are included with your CPU. And these are the same size nuts as the other ones that we used on the SPI board just to hold it in place. And we have four of those. And they are a little tight, uh, so we're gonna put them on here, just start them with our fingers here. And I will get two of them on here. For brevity. Okay. And we got one there and one over here. All right, so now this could have been a Hinkspix Pro, so you could easily have dropped in this CPU. You can see it would still fit just fine, or in this case, the Alpha Pix Evolution. All right, so several things we need to do to clean this up, just make it look a little better. We've got included zip ties in the kit, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull our sticker off the back here, and we're gonna run this zip tie up through here, grab these wires, and pull them down. This is really just for aesthetics, just makes it look a lot better. And on the back side, we're gonna pick up, whoops, we're gonna pick up the power cable so that we get that, so it stays in place. And we're gonna zip tie the whole affair down once we get all of our wires nicely arranged the way we like them. All right, get that zip tied in there and clip that off. So now you can see, We've got our wires all in there, they look great. And we're gonna run the cable back up through here. All right, now we're ready to drop this into our housing. So we're going to lift it up and over, pull out our additional power wire here. I'm just pulling on that, pulling out the extra length from the bulkhead fitting, and running this through. Now see that little notch right there? That's for the power cable to sneak up through there and hop out. And now we're going to take the included screws here and simply mount them. Now on your mounting board, you will have little X's in there to indicate where you should screw them. So there's some screw terminals right here and just simply screw them down at each one of those. Again, you don't have to over tighten them. So there are screw holes in this particular installation here, 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 and back in the corner. And so, we would then, of course, run any additional cabling. If we have a bulkhead fitting for Cat5, it would show up through here. This allows you to run your Cat5 cable up here and still have a waterproof connection coming out. And again, in this particular case, um, we do have uh, additional uh, one-inch clamps, and that would typically be used in a 32 output. Um, and then in this particular case, we also have this drilled for uh, a three-quarter inch if you're running Cat5 into your long-range differential connection. So all this can be completely customized, but you can see in a very short period of time, we're able to build out this controller ready to go. Hopefully this has been helpful, and this is how you build out the Holiday Coil Flex expansion system.